Hello, everyone. I wanted to take a quick moment and show you an uh, inpatient chart and how we're going to code for inpatients. Now, one thing I want to point out is the admission and discharge date. As you can tell, this is a real medical record, so the dates are very old. We're going to ignore those dates, and I'll explain why once we get into 3M. But first, let's look at the charts. So in an inpatient record, we usually start with the discharge summary, which gives us an overview of everything that happened to the patient. So I re recommend you read the, the discharge summary, then the HMP, if there was a consultation, an op, you read those, you go through the progress notes, you come back to the discharge summary, and then from there decide what to code. Remember, with inpatient coding, we follow the UHDDS guidelines for principal and secondary diagnoses, and these are found in the front of your ICD-10 coding manual in the coding guidelines if you're not sure what the UHDDS guidelines tell us. But the principal diagnosis that we follow per these guidelines state that the principal diagnosis is what brought the patient to us after study. And then our secondary diagnosis, so additional codes that we also assign, are anything that complicated, coexisted, was treated, or warranted more stay or resources. Okay? So be sure to review those. So in this instance, we have our admitting diagnosis. Discharge diagnosis, sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're different. Admitting diagnosis is what they think the patient was coming in with. Discharge diagnosis is what they determined, okay? So with ours, they're pretty much the same. Adjustment disorder with depression and dependent personality. Then if we look at the information, at the time of admission, the patient was angry and depressed and showed rather immature thinking. He was confronted with his recent suicide threats, admitted that he had been trying to pressure his landlady. He was seen for counseling by somebody, a social worker, who met with the family. There was a small but gradual improvement in the patient's willingness to accept responsibility, try to work out his problems, and become independent. He was treated with nortriptyline, 50 milligrams TID, and tolerated this medication well. Because of backache problems due to scoliosis, he was referred to physiotherapy and had heat and massage and seemed to help. At the time of discharge, the patient was eating and sleeping well and in good contact with reality, no longer seemed depressed, and had realistic plans to continue without patient treatment. He no longer presented a suicidal threat. He also had been confronted with his alcohol abuse and agreed not to drink. His parents were aware of the discharge plans and concurred. So his labs, everything's pretty normal. Recommendations, patients being discharged on nortriptyline, he will continue an outpatient counseling with a social worker. So next we go through, this is just the face sheet. We just scan over that. So here's the H&P. He's a 20-year-old single logger. Wherever he lives, he's under the care of somebody. The patient was admitted on a petition signed by his landlady stating that he had been threatening suicide. So this physician first saw the patient July 26th, Again, we're not going to worry about the year, and he's been taken Cinequin. At the time, he complained that he was depressed and attributed this to conflicts with his brother, whom he has to work with in the woods. Because of his worries, he hasn't been sleeping well. He felt tired during the day and lost interest. He had some stomach aches and frequently felt like crying. He also mentioned that he had thought of suicide. In addition, problem controlling his temper. He thought that the Cinequin was helping and I recommended that we increase it. The patient was advised to return in two weeks and made plans to start psychotherapy with a social worker. The patient failed to return to see me and also failed his appointment with that social worker. So then moving on, the patient's landlady called and said that on Sunday he'd been drunk and twice had threatened to shoot himself. The first time he had a loaded pistol with a hammer cocked, pointing at his stomach, she was able to take the gun away from him. He'd been drinking and seemed fairly intoxicated and then went to sleep. When he woke up later, he got a rifle out of the closet, loaded it, and again threatening to shoot himself. She talked him out of it and he put the gun away. She believed he was doing this because on the day before she asked him to move out. While he had the guns, he made her promise that she would let him continue living there. 
She called because she believed that she could not allow him to manipulate her that way, and she was afraid to confront him again. She didn't believe that he was suicidal because on the 22nd and 23rd, he had gotten up and gone to work and seemed to be doing as usual. The patient states he had no reason why he was asked to leave. He's been staying in the home for about six months on an informal basis. He doesn't pay for room and board, but does help out with some chores on the farm. He believed that he had been getting along well and considered this like his family. He admits that, that he had been upset when asked to leave and went out to his pickup, drove about 800 miles back and forth. He finally stopped at a bar, at a friend's, got drunk and returned home where the suicide threats and shirt ensued. He states that he still is depressed but not suicidal. He doesn't know what he would do if he had to find another place to live. So after he was admitted, the patient was cooperative, seemed to be in superficial contact with reality, gave no evidence of a thought disorder. He seemed depressed. His thinking seemed very concrete, and he had little insight. He was angry because he had been brought to the hospital and confined in the detention room, but agreed that he would cooperate with the evaluation. So his past medical history is no previous psychiatric treatment. Review of systems, pretty good health. He had a knee and abdominal hernia repaired. He seldom drinks. He got drunk last weekend. He does not smoke or use drugs. He moved out of his home because he couldn't get along with his mother. He's been working for his father cutting timber. He usually works with his older brother. They have not gotten along well together because the brother wants to give him orders. And when they are not obeyed, he starts hitting the patient. The patient states that he's been worried about bills. He hasn't been getting paid regularly by his father. Vital signs are normal. Then to scan over the exam, everything's normal, some mild scoliosis. So admitting diagnosis is adjustment disorder with depression, rule out major depression, dependent personality. Oops. And then says the patient is being admitted for self-protection, evaluation, possibly stabilization, and antidepressant medication. So now you want to scan over all the orders and notes. There's the discharge. And you can tell the difference between like social worker notes and physician notes or nurses notes by the handwriting, right? Now, as we noted, this chart's pretty old. So m most charts that you'll see now are electronic. They won't have the handwritten notes, but you still wanna scan through the progress notes and physician orders. So this is just a progress note handwritten of why he was admitted, right? Adjustment disorder with depression, suicidal threats and depression, and hospitalization for self-protection. So again, more orders. And here's the physician's orders. Again, you just wanna scan through these. I won't take a whole bunch of time the consents, you can just skip over the labs. You can skip over. There's nothing that we need to look at with the labs. EEG, again, this is normal. We just scan over that. Graphics and the med sheets, you can just scan over those. 
nursing documentation is the rest of the chart consent. So nothing else that we need to look at as far as physician reports. So let's go back to the discharge summary. And from here, we're going to read through and again, decide what to code. So discharge diagnosis, we have that adjustment disorder with depression and dependent personality. Then again, the summary at the time of admission, he was angry and depressed. He had recent suicide threats and was admitted trying to pressure his landlady. At the time of his discharge, the patient was eating and sleeping well in good contact, no longer seemed depressed and had realistic plans to continue with outpatient treatment. He no longer presented a suicidal threat. He had also been confronted with his alcohol abuse and agreed not to drink. So we have the four things we're gonna code. Right, we have the adjustment disorder with the depression, the suicidal ideations, the dependent personality disorder, and the alcohol abuse. So let's go to 3M. Okay. So here is 3M. And our patient is Mel, and he was 20. So this is where you want to put, make your input today's date, not the 1983, because in 3M, if we change the date to 1983, it will change the codes to what was used during the 1983 timeframe, which would be ICD-9 codes. So make sure and use current dates so we get current codes. So we're going to make him discharged today and let's say admitted yesterday. Okay, so then make sure you're in the DRG finder and hit continue. <coughs> and then the first screen is always where the patient left. So our patient went home, so we're going to hit one. Okay, you'll notice this says admitting diagnosis. So we're going to put in the adjustment disorder. And we had with depression. Okay, so now we're going to hit add diagnosis or continue either way. Let's go ahead and continue. And you'll see now it says principal diagnosis. So we're doing the same thing again. Principal diagnosis is what is used. Adjustment disorder for the admission is really just a placeholder for admitting diagnosis. The admitting diagnosis is not used in the MSDRG process, just the principal and secondary. So we're going to hit adjustment disorder again, adjustment, and then one, and then it was with depression, and then not with anxiety, so we're going to hit two. And it wasn't, they mentioned nothing about separation anxiety of childhood, so we're gonna hit no. So I'm gonna add another diagnosis. I'm gonna add suicidal ideations. So I'm gonna do the suicide and then ideation, which is just thinking about it, right? They didn't say he actually attempted, so we're gonna do other. Uh, we don't have any signs or symptoms, so we're gonna hit no. Now we're gonna add another diagnosis for the dependent personality. So dependence. So, and then under reactions, and it brings up dependent personality disorder. So this, we just still have to do our alcohol abuse. So I'm gonna take alcohol, go to three, and abuse, and you'll notice it says non-dependent because they never said that he was dependent, just that he abused it. So we're gonna hit the one. We're not gonna pick with dependence because again, it didn't state that. So we're gonna hit two. He wasn't currently intoxicated when he came in, so we're going to hit six. And then there wasn't a blood alcohol to code, so no drug use and no procedures. So 
So then we have the F10. Now there weren't any medical procedures like surgeries that we need to code because this was a uh, medical stay. So then we're gonna hit continue. So here are our codes, the F43.21, R45.851, F60.7, and F10.10, and then our DRG is right up here, the 881.